Let me speak, let me speak on the name issue. The, the NIMSI, the Identity Management Commission, mm. as at their last report, was around 104 NINs. There about 104 right? million NINs. Not people, mind you. Not, not necessarily people. You mean you're saying that they are duplicated? Unique numbers. Yes, 104 million. So the question is, if you have 104 million NINs in a country of 200 million people... Less than half. Yeah, yes, but obviously, and, and you can also imagine that I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that that number is indexed more towards adults than children. In other words, children, adults are more likely to get NIS than children, just because it's an identity that now begins to function your life, like you, you need it to function. So even if it were 50% um, penetration, by my assumption is that it would be more than that, because it, it, if I'm focusing on the adult population, especially the economically active adults, which is where credit comes in. It's we have enough coverage of NIN to do the work we need to do. That's the first part. The second is that the fluctuations around interest rates and the monetary policy of the country has not precluded people from borrowing. There's actually a high borrowing rate in this country. Uh, he, he, uh, the the, the expert talked about the, the loan apps that he audited. There's a significant amount of borrowing that goes on in the country and it's at even higher interest rates because there is no credit system that, one, brings everybody together to compete on those rates. So the loan apps can decide to charge 200%, 300% interest rates. Which is why people don't pay and they keep calling all sorts of people. Exactly. And the reason for that is because this thing is not regulated enough. There's obviously regulation around credit. There's a lot of obviously regulation around credit reporting. But some of these sharks get into predatory lending, taking advantage of people. That's because they can afford to do that under the table. They can afford to do that because the people who have the capital and have the responsibility, responsible capital as well, mm -hmm. do not have the, a, a, an infrastructure they can trust to make decisions on people. They can't say, here is Mr. Tunde's NIN, and if I put it here, I can see their credit behavior, their credit history, and based on that, if this Mr. Tunde is a good credit, I will advance credit to him at a cheaper rate. Mm -hmm. So basically what your credit score does, especially in places where this, and this is several places where this has worked, is that it, uh, it allows a lender to make a decision on how to price you, price the, the, the credit. So you can get, um, I was, when I was going to, I was going to do my a, a, a graduate degree program, and I essentially walked into a microfinance bank, mm -hmm. and the microfinance bank and I asked, I tell him I have a, I have a, I have a, uh, I have a, an admission from Harvard. I want to do a graduate degree, and not look on microfinance bank. And I said, check my credit. He ran my credit and gave me something all of two percent interest per annum. That's just because two percent is almost nothing. It's almost, it's almost negative interest if you if you if you count inflation because I had good credit. But if I were, if it wasn't an environment where such an infrastructure exists. What would happen is that I would have resort to the loan sharks if I didn't have the money to, to, to complete my graduate school uh, fees. I'd go to the loan shark and they'll charge me 200%, 300%. So it is this idea of not knowing who is right or wrong or who is good credit versus bad credit that it makes the system just apply essentially safety measures on themselves. So everybody will just charge you high because we don't know what they're going to get. So that even if it's 5% or 10% or so 20%.